there, my name is Sharice and I'm a children's librarian with the Tacoma Public Library and I have another STEAM video for you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make microwavable play clay that is actually edible and non-toxic and is found with items around your home. So this is what it looks like. I made some neon turquoise play clay already. And this recipe makes a really generous handful, as you can see, and I'll show you close up there. And it is squishy and flexible and a lot of fun. Um, it has no scent to it. You could actually add some essential oils if you want to make it pleasantly scented. It is pretty affordable because the ingredients are cheap and it will keep for months. I've added a link to the recipe as well to the YouTube video, so you can go ahead and reference that. So the ingredients that you need are pretty simple. So you need flour, and I just have basic all-purpose flour here. You need salt, just regular old table salt. You need cream of tartar. And this can be found in the spice section of most grocery stores, and you can also get it on Amazon. You need water, I'll just use cold tap water. You need food coloring. Um, you don't have to, but without it, your dough will just be kind of a plain white color. I have some fun neon food coloring here. You need some sort of oil, uh, vegetable oil. I actually have this old rice bran oil hanging out, so I'm gonna use that. And then this is really easy to make. The recipe calls for mason jars. So it calls for a big mason, mason jar for mixing your dry ingredients and microwaving in. Um, I'm not gonna use this one today personally because it's actually too tall for my microwave, which is what we'll be doing to cook it. Um, and I don't like that it has a less wide mouth. It's a little bit harder to stir. So I'm actually going to use a mixing bowl instead. So for mixing and measuring, I have just a kind of medium-sized mixing bowl, a spatula spoon to stir, I have a measure for my water, and I have a measure for my flour and salt, so one cup and half cup. And then for the cream of tartar and the oil, I have a one teaspoon measuring cup as well. So. For mixing the water and food coloring, I'm going to use a small mason jar, and this is actually what I'll be using to microwave um, the dough in as well. This is small enough that it fits into my microwave. If your microwave's taller, like I said, you can use the 16 ounce and the 32 ounce mason jars. First, I'm going to begin by mixing my dry ingredients. So in my medium-sized mixing bowl here, I have, I'm going to be adding one cup of flour, half a cup of salt, one tea, and one teaspoon of cream of tartar, and I'm gonna give that a stir. So I'm going to use my measuring cups, and I'm just going to measure. Start with the flour. So that's one cup of flour. half a cup of table salt, and one teaspoon of cream of tartar. Going to give this a stir to incorporate the ingredients. Okay, and then I am going to make my food coloring now. So I have measured out one cup of cold tap water, and I am going to add some food coloring. So you want to add about 10 or, 10 or 15 drops of food coloring. I made my neon turquoise dough before, so I am going to make my uh, neon purple this time. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just want to give this a little swirl to incorporate the color. And then I'm going to pour the liquid into my flour, salt, cream of tartar mixture. Look at that beautiful purple color. That makes me so happy. Purple is my favorite color. What's your favorite color? Okay. And then I'm going to add the oil. So we want to add one teaspoon of vegetable oil. I have this rice bran oil. Just going to put in one teaspoon of the oil. And we're going to stir this very thoroughly. And it should have the texture of very thick paint. Trying to, I am trying to get out some of the lumps just to make sure that all the ingredients are incorporated, but you don't have to worry about that too much. All right, so our next step is we're going to microwave. So this mixing bowl is not microwave safe, but if you use the microwave safe mixing bowl, you could just use the mixing bowl. I'm actually going to pour it into my mason jar and microwave in that. All right, so I have my liquid in my mason jar. I am going to microwave this for 90 seconds and then you want to give it a quick stir and you should see it starting to solidify. If it's still a little liquidy after you microwave it, then just do it in 10 second increments. And since we are dealing with glass, it's going to be hot in the microwave. So you want to make sure that you have pot holders or some hand protection to take your jar out of the microwave. So as you can see, it is starting to solidify, especially on top there. I'm going to give it a quick stir to check for the texture but I can definitely feel that some is a little bit more solid than other parts, especially the parts on top. So I am going to microwave this a little bit more. I'm gonna start with a 10 second increment, give it another stir, and then continue if I need. So my dough is starting to solidify, but I think it might be just a little too liquidy still. So I'm going to keep microwaving it. Um, microwave times, of course, will vary. My microwave is a little bit old. So I'm going to do 30 seconds and then see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like after 30 seconds. It's definitely starting to solidify a bit more. I'm going to microwave it for just a little bit longer. I'm going to do 30 seconds. Um, if your microwave is newer, you might want to do the 10 second increments that are recommended in the recipe. All right, so I have microwaved it for 30 more seconds and the jar is a little hot, but I can touch it. So you want to make sure that you are using pot holders to get it out or letting it cool down a little bit. Okay, so giving it a stir. Trying to really get down there. Give it a stir so it's kind of evenly solidified. The next step is that we are going to knead the dough. So I'm going to lightly flour my countertop going to turn the dough out and knead it. And that will help develop the gluten proteins in the flour and it'll give it a nice doughy texture, nice flexible play clay texture. 
Like, so this definitely looks like coming together as a dough. Doesn't look overly sticky. So I'm gonna let this cool down for a few minutes. I'm gonna do three minutes and then come back to it. And if I am gonna give it another stir, if it seems too liquidy, then I will microwave it more. But for right now, I'm gonna let it cool down for three minutes. All right, so I've let my dough cool down in the jar for three minutes. I can very comfortably hold it. And I'm going to give it a stir to see if it's thickened up. And as you can see, it is basically a dough already. I'm giving it a stir to make sure it's not liquidy in parts. Okay, so I'm going to turn it out on my countertop and knead it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of flour and sprinkle it on my work surface so that it doesn't immediately stick to my counter. Just kind of a lightly floured area. And I have more flour if necessary. So I'm gonna scrape this out onto my floured countertop. All right. And I am just gonna start kneading this. Just similar to any kind of dough that you would make. And you want to knead it until it is smooth. And it's just starting to stick a little bit, so I am going to add a little bit more flour. That just helps kind of dry it out, get the texture right. That is feeling pretty good. And like I said, kneading is developing the Gluten proteins in the in the uh, flour helps give it that kind of stretchy texture that makes it really fun and moldable. Moldable. This clay is really cool too because if you leave it out to dry, um, especially overnight or longer, you can let it dry out and then you can paint it with polymer paints. So if you make a fun sculpture that you want to save, you can let it dry and then paint it, which is really cool. And this dough will hold its shape as well. Okay. And this is looking pretty smooth. So here we have a handful of gorgeous neon purple play clay. It is scented only with the scent of flower, basically, it smells like flower. You can add some essential oils, just a little tiny bit, a few drops if you want. You can make lots of different kinds of colors. This recipe makes a good, generous handful. And you can make lots of fun different shapes and let it dry overnight, paint it with polymer paints. It's a lot of fun. And I made it with basic cooking items around the home as well, which I think is great. So keep your eye on the Tacoma Public Library YouTube page where we have more story time and steam videos for you. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.